Welcome to my channel. I am really grateful to have you here. I appreciate every single one of you that comes and watches my videos. So thank you very much. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. The first item that I have, the headline is, When the battlefield is the courtroom, veterans law clinics bring pro bono firepower. This is an interesting article, and being a veteran myself, I was uh, attracted to read it immediately. And it's a story about how uh, people who are studying the law in college are helping veterans take care of problems that they have. Uh, I want to just read you a little bit of it. Ask Christine Husky about the work she does at the Veterans Advocacy Law Clinic in Arizona, and she'll tell you a story about Iraq. We were helping a guy who deployed twice to Iraq. He was awarded the Purple Heart. He saw some really nasty stuff, like so many did, and he came back with PTSD. Like a lot of people in the military, he was reluctant to tell anyone about his issues, and instead he began self-medicating. That led to his less than honorable discharge, which in turn meant he no longer qualified for the treatment he needed for his addiction. You can't even go to the VA for therapy, Husky said. So she and her team at University of Arizona Law Students took the case pro bono. Thanks to the clinic's resources, Husky and her law students were able to travel to Washington, D.C. to advocate for the struggling veteran. Our client got to testify, the students made the arguments, and we got him upgraded to an honorable discharge. Thanks to that change in his discharge status, he was able to get the help he needed, and then he assessed the G accessed the GI Bill, and now he's a paramedic who's doing amazing things. And because we were able to take his case and get him the discharge, he was entitled, all because, excuse me, all because we were able to take his case and get him the discharge he was entitled to. This is apparently going on all over the country, and I applaud it. I think it's wonderful that veterans are finally able to get some help. It's unfortunate that the government doesn't do this, but, you know, our government has a long-standing pattern of behavior where they send men into war and then ignore them when they come back out. The title of this article is How the EU is Punishing Hungary for Its Migrant Policy. And... Um, <laughs> I just think it's interesting what's going on with the EU. We are set for another high-profile tussle between Budapest and Brussels. Yesterday, the European Union Court of Justice chose to impose a whopping $300 million fine on the Hungarian government for failing to apply EU asylum laws, a fine that increases by a million for each day the infringement continues. The legalities, as ever, were murky, but essentially Brussels' complaint was this EU law requires that asylum seekers be allowed into a member state to seek protection and to stay there until their claim is handled. Originally, Hungary had pre prevented, excuse me, uh, originally Hungary had prevented this by corralling applicants in border reception areas, centers, until the court decided in 2020 that this was not good enough. Subsequently, Budapest made it almost impossible to claim asylum in-state in a different way by physically excluding would-be claimants and refusing to process asylum claims unless the applicant had previously applied for a travel permit at an embassy abroad, for example in Belgrade. As a result, in-state applications fell drastically. This, together with some more technical matters, has now been, been held to amount to a failure to fulfill the 2020 judgment, hence the fine. I tell you what, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Hungary say, screw you, EU, we're dropping out, just like Brexit. Uh, there's something really galling about an overarching authority that has no responsibility to respond to you at all, telling you what you can do as a state. And I suspect that Hungary will fight this. and. Maybe their fight will end up being, hey, we're out of here. And that could cause repercussions across the EU, right? Who knows? I've never understood the reason for an EU anyway. What are they trying to accomplish? This next article 
Stonehenge vandalized by environmentalist um, extremists. I'm not going to read the article to you. You can read it yourself. Basically, uh, two people ran into Stonehenge with orange paint and painted the rocks. At least they didn't knock them down. <laughs> I guess we could give them credit for that. But, I mean, <laughs> I don't understand what these extremists hope to accomplish by doing this. I know they gain attention, but I don't think it's the attention they want because they just anger people. And so uh, they, they end up turning people against whatever it is that they're for. Uh, makes no sense to me, but we see this all the time, you know, throwing red paint on people's fur coats and all kinds of really disgusting stuff that ought to be charged as crimes. Now, the last article I have is investors flee ESG funds as bur bubble bursts on woke investing. This is another interesting article, which I will put the link to in the description. Um, according to a new report from the Financial Times, investors have withdrawn a net $40 billion from so-called environmental, social, and governance, or ESG, funds since the start of 2024. These withdrawals represent the first year that flows have trended negative and come amid, according to the Times, poor performance, scandals, and attacks from U.S. Republicans. The trend has been particularly pronounced in the United States. In April alone, American investors pulled $4.4 billion from ESG equity funds. BlackRock, once one of the most prominent champions of ESG, has now halved its ESG assets since 2021. You know, if there's one thing that drives investors, it's profits. And if they don't see profits, they're going to leave. And when a company implements an ESG program, their focus turns away from making money to satisfying interest groups. And when your focus isn't on making money, you don't make money as well. You don't do as well in any category. And so then what happens is the investments fall and people go, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I think that's what's happening is um, ESG has turned the focus of businesses away from their core, what their core focus should be, which is making money. And so now uh, those funds are starting to sink and investments are starting to leave. And I think they'll probably never go away completely because there'll always be some uh, zealous people who want to invest in stuff like this, even if it doesn't make them money, which makes no sense to me at all. I mean, I, what little money I have, if I was going to invest it, I certainly want to invest it in something that's going to make me money, not something that's going to lose me money. I mean, that doesn't make any sense to me. Does it make sense to you? Anyway, this is the news for the day. I pray for you that you will have an abundant life and that you'll be blessed beyond measure by grace and mercy and love and joy and peace from God. And that he will do the same for every person that you love. This is the Vietnam Mirror Vet, out.